Sabatau, Kabatau, Sabate, Divide, Divide. Hello, welcome to Oya Cinema Club. This is your lovely host, Steve Desch. I am here with your other lovely hosts, El Don Dino, Michaela, and JP, Biggie Shorty, aka Chris, Jason Eccles. And we are going to be reviewing the movie, The Masterpiece. Puri Tang, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this film, Puri Tang, is the film uh, that grew from a sketch comedy. Uh, it's all about black exploitation films. Uh, a lot of different aspects of this movie, but I want to go into initial thoughts first. And I want to know who has never, raise your hand if you've never seen this movie before. <laughs> Okay, okay, great. <laughs> Let's start with Dino. Dino, tell me your initial thoughts. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, I don't think I've seen this one. Um, I've, I've, I've seen so many other black exploitation films, but uh, most recently we've even seen Dolomite and some of the, the other movies. So I was getting huge. Dolomite vibes from the beginning of the movie, which definitely made it seem just wild. Uh, I can, watching this explain so much of you, Steve. I feel like I understand you more now in a deeper way than what I did before I saw the movie, uh, since I feel like you quoted a bunch. Um, <laughs> I just realized, like, so many of them seem so young. Dave Attell, like a, a young somewhat chubby Dave Attell, if you will. Uh, yeah, so some of the stuff I really enjoyed in the movie of just how well it was done. You know, some of the gags, some of the bits. The one guy that's always just repeating Chris Rock and Chris Rock just keep getting angrier and angrier and even at the end, you know. So some of the stuff I really enjoyed that they were doing a bit and then actually calling it out, like not just letting it, you know, disappear, but just like flat out calling that out. And then, yeah, there's some other stuff that clearly I didn't even quite make it to an hour and a half. And clearly they had a lot of just, I mean, the funny thing, how do you stretch a movie? The narrator says what it's going to say. Then the character says it. Then the narrator says that that was just said and so on. And they add, so they did some really, clever things uh to to stretch it but yeah i i can see why this is uh i've i've heard it come up a bunch before and uh and it, it's up there it's one of those the main actor what's his name he's done nothing and it's just like i mean he's more of a writer than anything else and it just and he kills it. I'm glad that I haven't really seen him in anything else. Because to me, like, yeah, he's Pootie Gang. Like, that's, it's not played by an actor. It's not played by a writer. That's just Pootie Gang. Period. It's like, that's it. That's him. And Bob Costa. I had such a great little tie-in ending. I was like, I'm because just how the movie started, I was like, I wonder if they bring this back this way, and they did. So I was happy. Uh, yeah, it was a fun little movie, uh, under an hour and a half. You know, not a whole lot you uh, else you would spend your time doing than laughing at a bunch of the stupid jokes in it. Thank you for that, Dino. Let's go with JP. Oh man, I, I remember when I was when I, when I when I was first introduced to Pootie Tang was in this little independent um, film called Scary Movie Three, when the aliens <laughs> thought that they were watching Pootie Tang, but it was the video from the ring. That was funny. That's a, that's another good stupid movie. It's a very underrated movie in my opinion from the scary movie franchises, even though it was the first one not written by, you know, the Wayne brothers, just some fucking white dude. Kind of like, kind of like this movie, maybe written by a white dude. It's, it's great. Um, <laughs> Bye, 
did not expect this movie to be what it was, to be quite honest. Like, I've heard of it. I've known people who've, like, quoted it, like, a lot. But I've never, I had no idea what the fucking movie was about. So I went in pretty damn dry. And, oh, God, it was, oh, it's weird because, like, I, I like stupid movies. This is definitely a stupid movie, but like yeah, it's stupid with with enough like with enough class where it's like okay, I, I'm willing to watch this and not be ashamed of myself or like enjoying it because wow. like <laughs> <laughs> that just seems like the highest praise of just like I watched it and I was not ashamed of myself. That's. <laughs> That's the JP level. It's not two thumbs up. It's like, I wasn't ashamed of myself. Because, <laughs> like, I guess, like, uh, the only, the closest movie we've seen to this is probably UHF, where it's, like, kind of like a collection of sketches, much like Airplane. But, like, I, I, it's, I think it's unfair to compare it to Airplane. Like, Airplane is just a fucking beast of its own. Like, I was waiting for that moment, to be honest, where it's, like, this movie won me over. But like it's it's it, it has some good rewatchable value. Like I'm willing to play this movie again. Like if if not to expand my fucking mind, just just for a fucking laugh or two. You know, it's really great. And oh god, there's so many young old actors in this film. <laughs> Death is inevitable, children. <laughs> But thankfully, black don't crack, so that's great. They look the same <laughs> as they do now. Um, <laughs> ooh, I never thought. I never. Well, I, I like Wanda Sykes, but I, I never. I, I did not know that she could pull off sexy. It was great. It's a, it's a good movie. Silly but good. She had some dance moves going on. <laughs> Thank you, JP. Let's go with Chris. Uh, I feel like when I read up on how this movie was made, it made complete sense because I was like, I can't follow it uh, at certain times. <laughs> and I think part of it is it's really hard to invest in feeling for Pootie Tang. You know, he has no real affect. So you can't really tell if you're like rooting for him. I mean, I'm kind of rooting for him, but at the same time, I don't exactly know what I'm rooting for him to do. Um, but I understand now with the four editors and the four, you know, multiple people writing it. And like, there was no single vision in the movie. So I know, like, I think that's why you just have to watch this movie as a fun movie. And I think an hour and 20 minutes is a perfect amount of time. And this is the kind of movie that's quotable because there's some funny moments in it, but I don't think it's something where you're going to be able to, uh, really analyze the story too deeply. <laughs> It kind of reminded me of Dewey Cox story. I don't know if you guys ever saw that, yeah. um, but like Dewey Cox is, you know, that's a little bit more. I would say that's very kind of accurate. Me of that. Yeah, for sure. Thank you, Chris. Michaela. I was surprised that I enjoyed it as much as I did. Like this one took me by surprise. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Like I was kind of expecting it to be kind of like UHF or like UFC. UHF. UHF. Okay, because like with UHF, I'm going inter to interrupt. <laughs> You you ex you exhaled from your nose and you said once, "Oh, that was, was clever," but you laughed at this movie, and <laughs> I was somewhat offended. <laughs> no, because like it really does have some really great moments. Like I actually think Pootie Ting is a genius idea for a sketch character, just because like he literally doesn't have to do anything. And that's like the club, like that's the yeah. joke. That's literally the joke. He just <laughs> exists in his radical stuff. And honestly, like the wardrobe in this was out of this world. Like there, are, I have never wanted so many like different coats in my life. Like, gosh, do I need more feather? Like a feather collar <laughs> things? I think I think so. Don't don't forget the dirt. You need to put <laughs> dirt on it. Dirty D. Dirty teeth. I don't know. Like it's just like one of those things where it's like I'm very confused as to why I enjoyed it so much. But like, yeah, yep. no, it's, it's it's and that's like what's fun about it. It's just like it's a good movie, but I can't tell you why it's a good movie. <laughs> because it's in the, the title. Of Pootie Tang. Uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. it's Pootie Tang. That's part of the joke. <laughs> so yeah, no, like I would totally watch this again. 
For sure. Jason. Oh, brother, let me tell you what. So I have a history with this whole production. Um, I originally watched this, the sketch, on the Chris Rock show the night it aired. Okay? And after seeing it, I laughed. And I was, like, young. I was, like, in high school, I think. I laughed so much and so hard at the original sketch. I went to school the next day, and I was talking, you know, about it. And nobody had seen it. There was one other guy in my class who had seen it. And me and him got to talking about it, and we couldn't even breathe. We were laughing so hard still. And then they end up doing like a – and I watched every single sketch after that. They did a series of them on the Chris Rock show season one and two. <clears throat> I think they only did two seasons of the show on HBO. Really great show, really topical stuff. But then they had this stupid sketch. It was always so stupid, and you could tell it was like a writer's room joke, like looking back on it as an adult. No part of this is serious. And I think, oh, and then this movie comes out and me and my friends, we had the DVDs. So we would quote it all day, all the time. We would say, you know, Sada te on the whammy sock. And we would say it so much in school, all that different, you know, weird lingo that other people in the school started quoting it, even though they had no clue what we were talking about. So you had all these kids like Sada te, and every time they did it, because it's so stupid, we would play this game where we didn't understand what they were talking about. We would just stare at them. <laughs> just like Bob Costas does. You know what I mean? Like, like, what are you talking about? Because that's the joke in the sketch. That's how every sketch kind of climax where he says one thing out that mix and they're like, that one didn't make any sense to us, you know? <laughs> and that's how we would play it in school too. And then people, they would be so embarrassed to even like say it around us, which they should have been. I don't know why we made it cool, but we did, you know, because I think people saw us having fun with it. So I've always loved this thing. When this movie came out, I've probably seen it 10 times. You know what I mean? Like, this thing's great. I'm going to tell you what I think makes it work. I think what makes it work is, is that it's a stupid idea. We know it's a stupid idea going in. And I think the writers, who are all very smart, very talented people, everybody involved in this thing is kind of a genius. And I think they know it's so stupid. It's like they're playing an improv game, a sketch game. How long can we keep this stupid, silly idea up in the air? Mm. Everybody, and I think it's just one of those things that went around the writer room and everybody wanted to touch it because it became a game. And that game like took on a life of its own and became a movie. And the movie was like self-actualizing. It was like, uh, what's the word when something like you Never. kind of mix it, yeah, when you manifest, there's a word for it, but yeah, basically that. It's like, it, it, it's became a self-fulfilling prophecy, the movie became. Like, they kept the ball up in the air so long that all of this actually manifested out of a joke. And I think that's kind of why we like the movie. Like, it was like, I think the initial idea was Louis C.K. Yeah, he wrote it. Yeah. He's credited for it. No one else is credited for, at least on IMDb, for writing it. Because he was the head writer on the Chris Rock show. It was just his stupid idea. And I guess everybody in the writer's room kept it up in the air for a while. But yeah, I think that's also, my first... I think, because he's a character... Well, I guess Steve hasn't gone yet, but just the, the idea that he's a... a he's, not a he's not even that sexual of a character, right? So he's just... He was like the Mr. T or someone that's, you know, a good guy, clean and does everything supposedly by the book. But, you know, so I think that's what makes it easier and why I think it has, has staying power in the fact that he's not this, you know, just a hunk and just does the karate and all that. But he's actually trying to be good by not doing anything right or doing the least amount of possible. Yeah. Yeah, Steve, yeah, if you would. I'll go ahead with my initial thought. Uh, this is like probably, I don't know, maybe the fifth or sixth time I watched this movie, but I haven't watched this movie in a long time. It's just I watched it a lot when I was young. And just like Michaela, I couldn't tell why I liked this movie so much. Maybe because I was a Chris Rock fan or something like that. But uh, I just really enjoyed this movie. And now watching it as a grown up, I there were many moments that I but the the moment he just started speaking, I busted out laughing. 
like immediately when the movie began. And uh, and yeah, throughout the movie, like like Dino was saying and Jay Jason was saying that it's a it's like a dumb movie. So it's just like throughout the film, I'm like, I know I'm watching this dumb movie and it's not long, it's just very enjoyable and it has like very, very like really cool moments. Like for example, one one of the moments that I didn't I forgot completely was that there was even uh, young booty in the movie. My and favorite part of the whole movie, hundred percent. There, there was a moment that, like, I legit lost it, and it was. This. <laughs> She's so great. She's so great. I, I completely lost it during that <laughs> my part. And uh, I'm right with you. I, I same same thing. <laughs> yeah, were there any were there any standout scenes for you guys? Uh, I part, 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 listen. Part of <laughs> pushing that damn uh big wheel out the window. That was yeah. it for me. That was it. <laughs> And the fact that how they shot it and landed and it kind of still rolled, I... because <laughs> because you know you if you haven't been through that, you had a friend who's been through that, and that's your with your friend. It's not the trike, but but it's, you know, it's like it's the Xbox. It's their you know grandma's yeah. ashes or something. Yeah. <laughs> uh. But the you know and also. Props where it's due. That kid did exactly. He played Pooty right. <laughs> where zero reaction, especially yeah. with the track almost hitting him. Like, and I'm sure any other kid would have flinched at that, but no, he played it solid. It was great. <laughs> and it was a pile of like all kids stuff, <laughs> you know, <laughs> even before the big wheel. But it's the big wheel that like just takes it over, over the edge perfectly. Like absolutely. And, and then her, like you know, have like, re, like, um, what, what, what's the uh, um, what's the word? Breaking down. Breaking down, but also like like him yeah, back. bringing him to come like like, like not a denying, but like um, reject. No, like a fatal attraction <laughs> moment. Yeah, yeah, kind of. There's a there's another where, where where she's taking it back. Like, no, I didn't mean it, Pootie. Like, please come back to me. <laughs> it was great good. scene, really good scene. Yeah. <laughs> there, I mean, there, there. Again, this is so sketchy type of stuff that there are moments that pop up, like that one. Just the visual gag of taking Dirty D to the car wash, oh, yeah. and then he like, just, you know, it's such like the quick edit of him just like in a new pimp attire, and it's like all clean, and he's like, ah! Like, that is great. Wanda Sykes just, they just kept going, I don't know, it was just like, Wanda, we got a camera and we got film, just keep dancing, and she, cause they just kept cutting back. And yeah, again, such a short movie, it's like, man, we ain't got movies. Throwing some on the Sykes just dancing, and yeah, her scene with the two dudes that come and try to pick her up as a as a hooker, and she beats him. And it's like just because I dress like one and I'm standing here next to hookers doesn't mean I'm a hooker. It's such a funny, I don't know that whole interaction because I knew what was coming. It was like, oh yeah, this is gonna be. We already know what the character is, so clearly. But I just, I thought that was hilarious. Just because I dress this way and I'm standing next to the hookers doesn't mean I'm a hooker. To me, it just killed me. Well, then, like, the guy was, like, so weirdly excited. <laughs> like. Oh, the old man. The yeah. old man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no wonder you have to pay women for sex. <laughs> Like, damn. Like, who was that old man? <laughs> like, I don't know what you were doing, but it was a good choice. That man's... Like, that's like, why he, he got hired. <laughs> that's how he got hired. You kidding? <laughs> that's how he got hired. Actually, I think they were shooting her scene, and they just drove up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, for me, though, it was like this somewhat spoiler territory. We always do this. We always do that. But um, I love how you're like, this is spoiler territory for Pootie 10. You're like, <laughs> guys, spoiler alert. We're about to go into the Pootie 10. You know, <laughs> if you if you haven't seen it yet. <laughs> I think, like, like, cause this scene is supposed to be like a very cathartic moment, and it's when it's when his corn dies, because <laughs> all of a sudden the movie like goes Wizard of Oz on you, where like it's obvious that this is all in his mind, where the background is suddenly like this um, like studio. like the studio like like like, like a back back background water paint or whatever like that. And you have Chris Rock playing it straight as a man dressed up as corn. <laughs> and even the paint on his face is very like, this is very Broadway-ish right now. <laughs> <laughs> Where, like, he's just playing it straight. He's like, Look, what are you doing, Pooty? Like, this is not how I raised you, Pooties. <laughs> and then the mom shows up. That he's was, a cow. That was great. <laughs> It's like, it's like, it's like you, you corn fool. Like you, you are, you're not, tre- you're not teaching Pooty right. Pooty, you guys do everything you do, but out of love, you know. It's a great scene, but it's like out of everything in the film, that's like the one that almost took me out of it, just because of how like very magical and ethereal it kind of was. That that I- took you out of it, not the. Uh... <laughs> That that's what, not not the the black face where it's like oh, oh. <laughs> uh, I I do think that my favorite bit though is when he's like doing the song and it's literally no sound. <laughs> and the dad comes, turn that shit down. <laughs> just like, yeah, that's great. That's, that's a great joke. Like, excellent. I I want to think that during those shots, those actors were not told that. It was not going to be added in post, <laughs> so they legit were acting as if there was supposed to be a song being played. Mm-hmm. I would like to think that, <laughs> as they, they sold it right. They did. They did. They sold it brilliantly. <laughs> and of course, Chris Rock as the DJ is like, "Oh, Pooty did it again! <laughs> it's another hit, Pooty! Yes!" <laughs> Just having a mental, Oof. like, like climax. At this beautiful work of art, and that was in the things at the end or in the credits too. They like went even further, Chris yeah. Rock smashing <laughs> everything. Um, I thought the scenes were that were like super cringy, like when he like took the pie and was like rubbing it on himself. And it took a really long time to go through that. I was like, ah, the whole time. Um, that whole romance right there was kind of rough. Well, that's the stuff where I'm like. Where they kind of like it, it, everything's a kind of a joke, and they're just doing it kind of dry, mm-hmm. and it's the kind of like I wonder if if they kept just going for the awkward and the silence and the pausing and the pausing, or if it was literally just like we need to extend this, <laughs> so we're just gonna <laughs> keep the pauses and we're gonna keep the just because it's like we don't have a movie if we don't show the pause like they were pinter pausing the shit out of the movie with everything from the pie to everything else so i can't quite tell how much was like awkward silence because i never saw those sketches i never we, we sorry we didn't get the chris rock show in, in but a uh so i can't tell if the sketch was also those kind of silent beats and just let the awkwardness marinate or not but uh a lot of pauses in the scene i want to know how much b-roll footage of that is and how many pies they went through to make that scene happen <laughs> we only, they only had three in cherry so got to make a count <laughs> i uh there is one bit that i remember that is like when it's in the beginning when they're talking about, I think, how Pudi Tang's dad died. And mm-hmm. it was in the, in the factory. Gorilla. By a gorilla. He's the only the third, the third time. time. 
the history of this mill. The man got named by a girl. And how, like, out of nowhere, I'm not going to lie, I didn't see that gorilla coming. I'm sure none of us did, but, like, I literally didn't see, like, I saw it midway through the frame. Because, like, that girl must have came from somewhere. He didn't just magically appear midway in the frame. Like, that's how late I caught it. Like, what? <laughs> Where? Oh, God. <laughs> I was surprised at how actually integral the farm scene was. I thought the farm scene was going to be like a very quick joke, especially after Trucky decides, you know, like after like not even day, a day's worth of work, he's like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm in a cab. I'm going home. F the corn. F the straw. Whose dog is this? <laughs> Why is this dog following me around? That and that the that sheriff good. out of all people was like, I want you to marry my daughter. <laughs> Um, what about Robert Vaughn, you guys? Who, who, who I love who, Robert Vaughn. Robert Vaughn is is uh, not Hannibal Lecter, Doctor. What uh, the guy that ran the company, the corporate guy? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. The, the guy who he was the president of corporate America. Yeah, he was like uh, <laughs> he's from like Superman too, right? The one with Robert uh, Vaughn just passed away. Did he really? Oh, yeah, he used to be on Seinfeld. He used to be, um, he was, um, a detective or something on Seinfeld. <clears throat> no, yeah. no, 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 wrong, wrong guy. Robert Vaughn died in 2016. Who was the guy who looks just like him on Seinfeld? The guy that, uh, it doesn't, if, if you look at the pictures, that they don't look as, other than they're two old white men, which I mean, <laughs> I guess you okay. tell me. Touche. That, yeah. <laughs> My bad. Sorry. I'm glad we got a fact checker on staff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Robert. I just know because like... I've been watching those Seinfeld clips, <laughs> and it's the guy that the old dude that was the game show host in Magnolia and stuff like that. I can't think of his name right off the top of my head, but yeah. Anyway, take it back. Take it back to Jason or whoever it was. You were talking about Robert Vaughn. I think he was in like Superman th two or three, the one with Richard Pryor. He was in that one, and yes. he played right. Right, and then he, mm -hmm. he was on a TV, a British TV show called um, Hustle. That was like every episode was like these five people who would hustle bad people, and he was like the main. Um, he's just an actor who is usually in roles where he's supposed to be like prominent and or, or like prestigious, and, and you know, or like a, right. he's always a rich guy. And like for him to play this role was pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah, he he fit right in like pretty seamlessly with the the the, the silly idiocracy of this thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Shit, he was in the Magnificent Seven and a bunch of those other. Oh, really? Bullet, yeah. He was in the original The Magnificent Seven. Yeah, and, I remember uh, him in Bullet. Yeah, and he and he had Stifler's so, mom to help him out in the movie. So like, those, I know, you know, right? And she was good in the movie too. I thought Stifler's mom was good. I don't know what her real Man, name is. When she's bite, when she's biting, I can't even imagine how they. Oh, they, Jennifer uh, Coolidge, yeah. <laughs> when she's just biting his lips and all that, JD's lips. I'm just like, this is, this is too much. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> like, talk about biting your niche, Jennifer Coolidge, man. Good for her. And we're talking about different characters. I want to know if you guys had a favorite character. Yeah, I and I, I think Chris Rock cheated. He gave himself a lot of good lines in this movie. He did. Yeah. So you know, he played like what five different characters. Yeah, because like the whole JB <laughs> joke with the guy. Like I love that. So every time I saw them on screen, I'm just like, yes, <laughs> Like very uh, Eddie Murphy of him, right? Like wrote, wrote, wrote yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, Eddie Murphy actually plays different characters. That's the only difference. That's a that's a low dig. I'm sorry, Chris. Um, <laughs> but um, uh, what's the word? Um, I like his the one line where he where they're in like, I, where, where are they in a diner or something like that? Or like that's so they're watching the TV. Is like like that's not Pooty Tang. That's Beauty Tang. That's not Pooty Tang. Is like ah, right, that's what I said. <laughs> I know what I said. <laughs> I, that was 
That was great. That was a good scene. Because we all have that one friend who's just, just like, yes. Like, like yeah, that was said. yeah, we like there was no misunderstanding. We 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 said what we said. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. That for me it has to be Chris Rock. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think for me, um, I've already mentioned it. That big wheel getting thrown out the window, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, like the women in this movie, like delivered. Yeah, they did. Man, Wanda Sykes though. <laughs> that would be and really, Wanda Sykes just a bunch of comedians. Mm -hmm. it's just a, it's just a movie with a bunch of comics, stand-up comics. Yeah, I mean, I, I almost want to say the belt is my favorite. <laughs> yes. Uh, now, where they figured out how to edit that, <laughs> they did an ex. Whoever figured out that editing. Like, I feel like that's Back, someone, like, yeah. spent, like, two weeks agonizing over that. And once they found her, they're like, we have a movie, guys. <laughs> we have a movie now. Playing it backwards as the way to put it in and uh, take it out of the belt and back in. Because, like, um, you also have to figure out the speed, too. Like, that's the thing. Like, it... Like you yeah. have to figure out the right speed to make it look seamless or else it wouldn't have worked. And then Pretty pre does, like, a few, like, poses and whatnot, like, after taking the belt off and then putting it back in, like... I'm sure that will mess up a guy's mind a little bit. Like, okay, if I'm going to do this, I have to do that in reverse, right? Mm -hmm. You know. It was mostly seamless. I feel like, I don't know if they did it. Not a missed opportunity, because the whole thing is kind of crazy. Um, Dave, uh, oh shit, what's his name? Bob and Dave. Uh, oh, Dave, Dave Cross. David Cross. Dave, Dave Cross. <laughs> David Cross. <laughs> I mean, the blackface is, is, is pretty wild, but me having worked in corporate America, it has some like possible um, kind of, uh, what is it, movies or whatever from uh, Kevin Smith. But it's just the idea I would have wanted to see more because just the clip of him trying to teach other people how to be pooty tang <laughs> is one of, is such a wild idea but you get into the whole thing, especially then when the thing opens and all these other pooty kangs just come running out so i could have i could have seen more of a corporate video of teaching people how to be pooty tang but it goes way into the deep end of, of blackface and everything else so Probably got the the right amount, but I would have loved to see the idiocracy of some kind of trying to teach booty tank to, for corporate America. So yeah, that's a a character that we we saw clearly just <laughs> enough because it it crosses the line and, in so many different places. And of course, David Cross does it in his most David Cross way that possible. Like, even the blackface, as bad as it was, like, even that was very lazy. Like, it was not, like, full-on blackface. It was just, like, stupid soot on his face and nothing else. But <laughs> I just love how the, the gang of other, like, po corporate pooty tangs, like, like uh, most of them were just white dudes in wigs. <laughs> Yeah, I like, think okay, I was like, I only, yeah, there was one black dude, I feel like, and everyone else. <laughs> that's how lazy it is. Like, yeah, that, 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 that pans actually. And that like totally makes sense. In there too. Really? Yeah. I did not yeah, notice that. I, think, yeah. <laughs> I saw one or two women in that group. Damn. So, <laughs> so my favorite characters, and nobody mentioned him, was this guy. Oh, oh, this is some fine dirt. This is right. some good dirt. You know I'm gonna hook you up. Man, I hate these bastards. They make me shower every day. They don't have to be dirty. I need to be dirty. Dirty thing, man. Dirty thing. I mean, I, the, the, the dirty his entrance with the cloud of dust, I was just like, damn. It's a good pairing, Dirty D and, and Froggy. Because yes. you would think that Froggy would be a member of the other gang, 
who had the the big nice blue velvet suit. Mm -hmm. I was like, no, he, he's working for TNT. And they're you from know, the like wire, it, both of those guys, right? They're both in the yeah. wire, and they're both they're both in, from the wire. That's right. And, uh, oh and wait, in Oz. That movie, wait, that show Oz, that HBO show about the prison. Yeah. Okay. So the younger guy is from both of those. I don't. Who was? I don't think Dirty D was in the wire, though. Was he? He was. Yeah, he was in the wire. He was in both. Okay. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. I know he was in Oz. He was one. He was one of the. Um, yes, he was in Oz. Yeah. He was in like the later seasons of Oz. Uh, yeah, Ricky he was... Cassie. He just passed away too. But before he passed away, he won uh, the Golden Globe for, I think, um, he may have won it for like House of Cards or something after House of Cards. Yeah, he played like a uh, a barbecue uh, store. Like he had like a barbecue mm -hmm. shop. Um, yeah, he was really good in that. I, I think he's yeah. a great. He's a great actor. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, he passed away just recently. That I know for sure. But yeah, he's been he's been character acting for so long and theater acting. He's he's a gym. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, oh, and I love how like that. He what? was Norman Wilson in The Wire for a couple of years as well. So Okay. Yeah, I feel like he might have been one of the drug addicts. Like, you know, when they're in the you know, that the drug dens. I feel like he That's... might have been one of those characters. Yeah, I think I think maybe you're right about that. <clears throat> yeah, uh, yeah, just like <laughs> the, the the certain it's hard to say it. There's like a certain level of like gravitas a lot of the actors play these characters with, but still, it's so silly it's almost impossible. <laughs> take it seriously. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know. I think he played it really well with. Uh, with that corporate uh, America guy, Elector, where he's like, I tried taking down uh, Pretty Tang. That man's magical. Like, what, what makes you think you can do it? You know? It's like very, it was good. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, when he made, when Dirty, Dirty D makes his entrance in the, in the, in the country, he I, he did so much, not just a sound, but I could have sworn he like swallowed some oh. or just like <laughs> made a brain into it. Um, yeah. Uh, but here, fun fact of him: he's the only recurring. He's the only person to have a recurring role in every series written by David Simon, filmed in Baltimore. So. Oh wow. Um, there's there's a, there was another show called The Corner that came out before The Wire. So I remember The Corner. Was, I loved it. So I wonder. I don't know. What and he was and two. He was two uh homicides. he was the girl's dad. I think in that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Or something. Went or maybe no. He might have been. I forget. He may have been again one of the people who lived in the corner. You might be right. Yeah, went to University of Michigan. So. Big oh, he went to U of M. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Or maybe I did not I forgot it. But yeah, that dude, you know, he was making his mint doing theater in New York. Successful off-Broadway actor and stuff. Well, before yeah. final thoughts, is there anything you guys want to say about the movie? I think they covered a lot of the stuff. I, I really know. love how they really played that Pui Tang was not only a man that you couldn't mess with, that no woman could, could attain, but like every children in America like looked up to this guy where like he was incorruptible. And the moment that, you know, corporate America like sh shames his image, it's suddenly like, <laughs> I love that new segment where the guy says like, like, my kid doesn't even respect me and he's upset. <laughs> That Pui Tang betrayed his ideals. And then he just starts cursing like crazy and gets bleeped out. I thought that scene was pretty funny. It was brilliant. And, yeah. you know, and, 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 and I'm glad that you know the first scene actually solidifies that. Like it, let, it lets you know no, Pui Tang is a, not only a man of the people, but but for, for the children as well, where you know, where Dirty D's doing that drug deal and they tell the, the, the dumbest kid on the block, like, 
what is this stuff? Like, is this candy? And then here comes Pre Tanks the rescue <laughs> out of nowhere. <laughs> Pootie Tang <laughs> is. I really love that about the film. You know, I will say this about that joke. Uh, I don't. I don't know why I was expecting when because the way they set up the dumbest kid in America or whatever he was supposed <laughs> to be, dumbest kid in the neighborhood. I just thought he was gonna like do something more dumb. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when you set it up to such a high standard, him just asking if the drugs were candy wasn't enough for me. <laughs> That's all. No, I, I, yeah, I, 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 I was waiting for something, and I don't know if, again, they just edited it that way, or if they were like, "You got to take that out." You know, yeah, they might have thing. had the kids saying something terrible, and they're like, "You can't, you can't have the kids say that." I feel like the joke is that it does also remind me of like a lot of like their PSAs back in the day. You know, it's like like some kid out of nowhere comes into an obviously bad situation, like these two <laughs> gangs doing a doing a drug deal, and he just happens to be riding a bike like in between them. Yeah, yeah. that's why it worked for me because it's like. I don't think any kid with like two brain cells would like walk into that and be like, "Oh, I am fine. Everything is fine." It's like as soon as you see, like, like, oh no, he's wearing suede. I'm going this way. <laughs> <laughs> Dirty money, clean drugs. <laughs> yeah, I you thought that was pretty funny too. This. <laughs> they were doing a drug deal like that out in the open. Also, kind of made me feel weird. <laughs> I mean, they do it in The Sopranos all the time. Is that weird? Like, I, I, come on. The amount of times that they murk someone in broad daylight while there's traffic on the bridge okay. and no one notices it. It's New Jersey. That's why. <laughs> this might have been New Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love that, too. It's like, it's like, it's like Fruity Tang was from a, from a little neighborhood outside of Gary, Indiana. Chicago. I like that too. <laughs> I like that a lot too. That was pretty good. Yeah, I can. I feel like that. I can. I feel like that's a writer's room joke. That's like a straight up stand up joke. I just yeah. I, I I could hear it being put in the script. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh man, and that's probably why I'm shamed because like. These are jokes that I would love to have come up with, but all I get are groans. <laughs> so it's probably just envy, not shame. <laughs> That's probably exactly what it is. That's a fact. <laughs> well, with that being said, let's go into final thoughts. Let's start with Jason, who went last on initial thoughts first. Sure. Um, so final thoughts. This thing, uh, my fear was that Hey, this thing may not hold up. Uh, and in a lot of ways, it did. Uh, but in a lot of ways, it did. Uh, but the movie is like so short and so sweet, and it's so, it's so goofy. Um, I wouldn't personally recommend this to anyone. Uh, only because of the relationship I had with it, I feel like I used it to its full capacity. You know what I mean? Um, I'm really actually very happy and surprised that you all liked it so much because uh, I do think it's quality. It just, for me, it was so much like a, uh, uh, like a, a I have an emotion. Huh? Guilty pleasure? Yes. It, well, not even guilty pleasure. I took so much onus in this thing, mm -hmm. even though I had nothing to do with it, just because I was like so early to the party and I got to watch the whole world catch up. So it made me feel good to know that yeah, I saw quality in this thing that I'm sure most people didn't even want to be bothered with, but it, it felt very culty. This feels like a cult classic in a lot of ways, but a very popular one because this thing caught fire. Uh, especially, it came out at the right time, too. It came out when like DVDs were just getting very popular, and everybody wanted many DVDs in their life. And so this thing probably made more money on DVD than it did even um, you know, in theaters from rentals and people just sheerly wanting to own it. So I, I feel like most households own Booty Tank. I mean, at least in my circle. Uh, so yeah, this this movie, I would recommend it. If, if it ever comes up, like now, I would probably say, hey, have you seen Booty Tank? You should watch it. 
But before today, in any time in the last five to ten years, I may would have said, yeah, you could pass on it. It probably doesn't hold up. But it's so goofy, and I think it has its place. I think it has its little place in comedy and a little thing, a little small section of pop culture. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jason. Michaela. I mean, I have to agree. Like, I, I, I definitely see that this is like something that was like a labor of love. Um, and I think that's part of why it's so fun is you can kind of tell that everyone had so much fun making this that you just kind of feel it throughout the movie. Um, honestly, it's it's kind of something that I, I know that like growing up, I would have never been exposed to, but I kind of wish I was like, I feel like if I had watched this with like a group of friends, like this would have had some like this would have been some like a, a, an inside joke thing. You know, like that's that's I think that's what's charming about it is it feels like it's a, a one big inside joke. You know, and um I'm glad that I watched it. I'm glad I, I participated in it. But is it something that I would actively like suggest to people? No. Thank you, Michaela. Let's go with Chris. So I never I never saw the original Chris Rock show, but I think um now that understanding that, I think knowing that character, you would have more into it. Um, I think it kind of falls in that same ilk as like all the SNL movies that came out, you know, Undercover Brother and Corky yes. Romano that were based off of small sketches. And I think it leads me to want more of like Chappelle show to become, you know, let's see some of those put into a movie. Let's see some Key and Peele put into a movie. I think that would be interesting too. So if you're into that kind of stuff, things that are sketches that turn into movies, I think I would recommend it to in that way, I would say. And I think if you have a relationship, like Jason said before, uh, with that, with those sketches, um, that that would make a big difference as well. You know, just to piggyback on that for a split second, it's kind of like their their version of a Monty Python situation. Mm -hmm. That's what it feels like. It feels like here are a bunch of goofball comics and they're like, let's let's do a Monty Python over here. Yeah, no, that's exactly, like it's definitely been that same mill, definitely. Yeah. And yet somehow I didn't Stupid. like a fish called Wanda. It was are you for real? <laughs> It was too British. No, 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 no. I, I was because like, like because like it was it was made by half of the pythons and I didn't like it. Oh, uh, okay. So it's probably that's probably why only half of them did it. I feel like the only reason why you like Monty Python is because I like Monty Python. You don't want me to think that I like Monty. I watched Monty Python before you did. That's true. Yeah. But like you weren't like obsessed with them. I was not obsessed with. Like them. you did not have that face. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna play face. the lumberjack song on repeat. So. No, <laughs> and you played with the Lin Manuel stuff. So, uh, well, what the fuck? What was that about? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought I liked the movie. <laughs> That's it. I liked it. <laughs> you did you did you know? So I'm gonna try and hurry because I would hope that our review of this movie is shorter than the movie itself. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I actually enjoyed the movie more, not knowing much of it, watching that I wasn't sure if I was going to enjoy it, really, that I was going to have to uh, just accept it. But, yeah, I had some funny moments. Um, I don't know who I'd recommend it to. If it's like, do you want to see Chris Rock get slapped again? You can <laughs> find it in Pretty Thing. He gets slapped. But uh, that's for you, JP. <laughs> uh, but yeah so I, yeah I don't know who I would recommend it to it's weird it's, funny to it's, it's a weird thing and you have the whole VCK stuff that it's also like how much of that do you want to be kind of supporting in that sense but it's a comedy so it's this I feel now kind of lives in it's weird little thing but there's some great things like Man, I know Wanda Sykes kind of had her moment, but I just feel like seeing her do her dance and all that, it makes me, uh, it reminds me of Tiffany Haddish. I'm thinking like Tiffany Haddish is having a bigger moment than one Wanda Sykes was able to have. Mm -hmm. uh, at least that's what I, I got watching this time around. Um, I was like, man. I know one of the sides ended up having her show and all that, but I just don't think she got to the height, especially maybe in movies, as uh, Tiffany Haddish has now. 
so hope, maybe that's a thing of improvement that we're having. That's not really uh that's just my final thought, I guess, just something that I thought, but watch the movie, don't watch the movie, Puritan got you anyway. Thank you, Dino. Uh, my final thought, uh, this movie is hilarious. I have not seen it in many, 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 many years. And I still had a, quite a laugh. Uh, this is not a movie that I will openly recommend to people. But if people are just looking to just have a laugh and waste a little bit of time, I would definitely recommend this movie. Uh, I recently actually heard someone asking Wanda Sykes if there will ever be a sequel for Pretty Tang. And she was like, no. <laughs> 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 so enjoy the one that we have. And with that being said, that concludes uh, the review of Pretty Tang. So Wait, I have a question. Yep, there we go. Uh, go ahead, Jason. Oh, uh, thanks, Michaela. Uh, I, how did you know I had a question? Oh, I, I have no idea. Well, basically, my question is, Steve, what do you got for us next week? Next week? I don't know why you asked me. I just went. I can't go again. If any, if I'm not like Venezuelan or Cuban or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> Jason, it's your turn. <laughs> me? <laughs> Okay, great. Uh, so I'm going to do something a little bit different this week that I've never done before. And I'm going to break my cardinal rule of Cinema Club. Wait, you're going to bring the door back? <laughs> nope. Okay. You're going to do something that's you my, saw. That's my second rule of Cinema Club. I don't know what it never is. Never bring back the door. A movie that you've seen. seen. Nailed it. Very, very assertive. I mean, very uh, attentive. Very. Not, There's it's, words it's for almost, what I mean to it's say. It's almost like we live together. <laughs> You're using my brain again. I told you to leave it where you found it. Wait, uh, are we, are we seeing again? We're watching yeah, yeah. Tang for the second time. No. <laughs> so we're watching a movie that I want to watch with you guys specifically. Mm -hmm. uh, so the movie that I chose for us to watch, because I've always wanted to talk to people about it, and I've only met one other person in life who's seen it, it's a national treasure, not of this country, but of another one. Uh, Raise the Red Lantern. Ooh. It's a Chinese film, and I will tell you that it is a Chinese national treasure. It's, it's like their most important film they've ever produced, and they're very proud of it, and rightfully so, in my opinion. That's what we'll be watching for next week. Okay. It's like a gritty Red Balloon movie. <laughs> Balloon says China, nineteen twenty. One master, four wives. Okay, I've never so heard. That's what we're gonna watch next week for Jason Echoes, McNeil and JP, Biggie Shorty, aka Chris, Hell Don Dino, and me Steve Destiny. We'll catch you next week. Bye bye. Hi, I'm JP Cerno, and welcome. Uh, thank Hi, I'm JP Cerno, and thank you for watching. Oh yeah, Demon Let. Hi, I'm JP Cerno, and thank you for watching Oye Demono, Demono, the fucking shit. Okay. <laughs> hey, I'm JP Cerno, and thank you for watching Oye Demono, right?